picture the scene. You've created a big group of tough colonists, axemen, who have fought their way through a pack of wolves to reach their opponents. Another tribe of similarly tough axemen. You managed to defeat a bunch of their soldiers. You managed to defeat a bunch of their regular villagers. You destroy some of their buildings. Maybe even you take some of their territory. But then the snow starts to fall. The weather starts to get colder and colder. And your axemen suddenly aren't doing as much damage anymore. They're taking more damage. They're moving slower. They're just not as useful. If only they had warm coats to keep them through the winter, just like mum told them to take. If only they'd listened. But they didn't. And now they're stuck with an impossible choice. They can't push further into enemy territory. There's no way for them to heal. Whereas the enemies are pumping out new units all the time. They can't go back. The wolves that they killed had families, and those families are pissed. And there's no use hoping for backup to show up either. Winter times are hard, so all hands on deck gathering food and wood to burn to keep people warm, otherwise there might not be a colony to make it back to. So there's no choice, your soldiers have to hunker down in the snow, hope that the wolves don't get hungry and come looking for them, and hope that the enemies that they just gave a bloody nose to don't come looking for revenge. On the face of it, Northgard looks like any other RTS. You make troops, you move them around, you build buildings, you assign people to work in those buildings, it's got a little bit of the kind of city builder stuff in it. But what makes Northgard so interesting and so different from other real time strategy games is that its focus isn't really on domination. Yes, you can build up a big army, yes, you can destroy opponents, and you can take over their territory, move in, and wipe them off the map, but that's not really the the aim of Northgard. It's definitely one of the victory conditions, but it's not really the one that it pushes you to focus on. The main idea is that you just want to survive. And if you can survive better than other players, then great, you'll win. But surviving is hard. The main mechanic in Northgard is that time passes. You go through spring, you go through summer, you go through autumn, you go through winter. And winter, in particular, is the important one. Other seasons will give you different kinds of bonuses. For example, farms will output more food during the summer. But winter is really the one. It's the biggie. It's the one that comes at the end of every year. And it's the one that causes the most issues and changes the game for you the most. During winter, people eat more food. They gather less food. And more importantly, they burn more wood got to keep themselves warm somehow. And as a result, your income of food and of wood will go down and you won't be able to survive the winter unless you've prepared a decent stockpile of those essential resources to get you through the winter. It's basically a, a management game hidden and disguised as a real-time strategy game. But with enough of the kind of parts of real-time strategy games that people would really like and they make them really easy to get into, that it'll trick people in a way and also make it really easy for people to get into this and start doing more management stuff. It's all about spinning plates, like all good city builders are really. So the main mechanics are simple. You start with a region and you can create scouts which will explore other regions nearby automatically you don't have to do anything with them which is fantastic in itself each region uh, will have some kind of unique benefit for the most part so if they have a forest then if you cut wood there you'll get more wood if they have a plane you can build a farm there which as i said before will give you more food during the summer if they have a pond you will to fish there and if you are gathering fish you get that throughout the winter as well because there's always fish and a variety of other things sometimes there's different enemies there sometimes there's a wolf stand and you'll get some additional bonuses for taking over that but the more important thing is you colonize these regions 
similar to how you would take over a tile or a space in like a civilization game. So you're expanding your borders out of what is your territory. But the main point of doing that isn't to build up a giant colony and be like, I'm the big strong one, I own all this land. It's to survive. You might move and take over a bigger chunk of land because you need wood because the last winter was really tough and you're not sure you're going to make it through the next one. So you take over the forest tile and you get additional wood. But everything is constantly a balance that is really difficult to get used to and as a result really fun. So for example, each of these regions can only have two or three buildings on it unless you develop it further using money. To colonize more of these regions you use food. So already that's multiple resources being used up just by expanding and getting things for your villagers to do that's productive. So for example you find a region that has forest in it and you're like great I need more wood so I'm going to colonize it, it takes about 80 food and I build a wood cart up there which uses the last of the wood I had left to build a wood cart up. You send two villagers there, one to build it, the other one to staff it once it's finished being built because it can only have a maximum of two people. So that means you've got two less villagers doing everything else. Two less villagers gathering food. Two less villagers making money. Two less villagers in your army. So you're using you're trying to balance where these people are and what they are doing. So let's assume that now these jobless but uh, villagers were gathering food before you move them over to start gathering wood. Maybe now you're losing food. You're eating more food than you're gathering. If that food if your food resources get to zero, people start starving and they'll die. So what's the solution? More people? So you build another house so more people can come colonize. You build a pub, set someone there to staff it, to keep everyone happy, to encourage more people to come and colonize. And then you need to expand again because you've run out of places to build because you've just taken that forest tile and you've used up every building slot just to try and keep things afloat. Then you look over the wolf clan and those smug motherfuckers are just having a goddamn feast. They're leveling everything up, they've got like fucking seven story buildings, they've got fuck and it's the worst. And you're like, those bastards, what are they doing? But it doesn't matter. Because maybe next winter they'll hit snags. Because you can't do everything in Northgard. That's the important thing. When you're playing a game in Northgard, you kinda need to start to not exactly specialise, because you can do a bit of everything, but you need to have a bit of a, a focus on what victory you want to go for. Do you want to be the one who gets the most fame? In which case you want to be taking part in raids and you want to be creating scalds to sing at your pubs about how great the heroes of your nation are. Which only one faction can do, but it's one of my favourite like unique things. Next to the sheep pen which one of the factions gets, which is literally just a pen to put sheep in. Usually you get sheep and you can either slaughter them for food, or if you keep them in a region they will reduce the amount of wood that region uses because everyone's warm during the winter because there's a sheep there. Let's not look into that too much. But if you have a sheep in, then you can just put two sheep into a pen and for some reason that makes food. I don't know. That's good, I guess. Uh, it's strange, but it's it's one of the more fun things in that game. But yeah, so maybe you try to get a fame victory by, you know, having these heroes sing and you're building up fame. Maybe you want to win a trade victory, in which case you create a lighthouse. And the way lighthouses work is that you make money by sending, or you make victory points by sending money. So you can send money in different ways, or in different amounts. So you'll get x amount of trading points you know if you send you know five gold for all the gold you come in and so your income reduces by five maybe you realize someone else is catching up to you and you need to make more money so you can send more money so that you can get closer to this victory faster uh, then there's a variety of other different victory conditions i'm not going to go through all of them but they all feel very unique and very cool and actually very board gamey. A lot of Northgard feels very board gamey. And that's not a bad thing. 
Does this all sound a little bit overwhelming? That's fair. It is a bit. There's a lot of stuff to do. Thankfully Northgard has a really good campaign mode. And I say really good in the the missions are really good, they're well structured, they kind of introduce new mechanics, you know, a piecemeal. They introduce the unique ways each of the factions play piecemeal, which is actually a nice touch that I didn't really expect from it. Um, it's worth knowing the North card has been in early access for a while and it kind of just came out of early access, which I admit that I kind of go into a lot of games that come out of early access with a bit of a stigma, because I think, hmm, it's... There's been a lot of dodgy ones in the past and I'm not super confident about this, but Northgard is fantastic, it's super polished, the campaign is really good, the story in the campaign is a bit rough, it's, well I mean, honestly it's just a bit dull, not a lot really happens, it's very interesting, and the voice acting's kind of so-so, uh, but the actual missions are great, and they introduce all these new mechanics and kind of encourage you to go into the skirmish mode when you're done, because the skirmish mode is the meat of the game, it is the main you know, one V's, well, it'll usually be about four players on a map. You get your lessons in the campaign and then you jump into this story mode, into this skirmish mode and you try out what you've learned. And it helps also that that campaign is incredibly unforgiving at points. It's, it seemed to default to the hard difficulty for me, I'm not sure if that was just a bug or not. I didn't notice until I was about halfway through the campaign and I was like, this is getting impossibly difficult. But it seems to be just because it defaulted to the hard difficulty. But regardless, it's difficult. Which is good because those skirmish games are insanely hard as well. It's really hard to win a game of Northgard unless you've gotten really good at it. And as a result, the campaign sets your expectations right from the start. At least for me, it's entirely possible I'm just terrible at this game. Which is probably true, but I had a lot of fun with it regardless. So it should be no surprise at this point that I definitely recommend Northgard. It's available on Steam just now. Uh, I don't know if they're planning on bringing it to anything else, but at the moment it's on Steam at least. Uh, there's a full review up on the website if you want to read my words instead of hearing them. Uh, but yeah, I give it an 8 out of 10 and I really, really like it. Thanks for watching guys. And if you enjoyed this, please go watch our Game of the Year videos if you haven't already. Uh, put a lot of effort into those, they're pretty fun. Uh, you can catch our podcast, we update usually about once a week. Uh, it's called Glitch Free Gaming, there'll be a link on the video roughly about here. And also check out the main site, glitchfreegaming.com, for more written words and video stuff. Thanks.